evening everybody uh, must apologize I'm a tiny bit late today um, busy editing the uh, Holy Communion for tomorrow so if you want to follow the psalm today it's Psalm 116 uh, and I thought I'd start with a short reflection on John chapter 9 verses 1 to 17 John goes like this As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbours and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not the man, this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best little bit of thinking about the Bible that I've ever done, but um, I would, I think there's some really interesting points in here. First of all, this is the most ridiculous healing. The first thing to say is Jesus is saying this man's born blind so that God's works might be shown. Here he is being God and his first work is that on a blind man he puts mud in his eyes. That isn't usually the way you do it. The next thing he goes to a pool which, and the name means scent. The chap obeys, washes his eyes and he's sorted, he sees clearly. Now we've done a lot of thinking in the last few days about seeing clearly and seeing in the light of Christ. And yet this work is actually one where clearly Jesus is kind of making it worse before it gets better. And and what what's going on is he's the simple point is you don't put mud in somebody's eyes if you want it to make it better. So if this is the work of God, that's weird. And if this is the work of God, then actually there's something key in there about being sent and about obeying that sentness and about washing when you're instructed. And I think, I think this is hinting to us a bunch of things. That the work of God in healing us so we can see straight is not in us sitting and meditating on the crux of the ethos. There's something about maybe actually darkness and a greater lack of clarity, but obedience in following are actually the journey to getting our eyes sorted. And my experience says that. I don't think I don't think necessarily God's ways make sense. The end doesn't make any sense at the beginning. I can remember even as, a, as a, a man called to being a parish priest, I, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for decades. In the end, when I did the following, it was like if you explode a jigsaw but then reverse the camera, it's like as I did the following, the pieces coalesced and held together and suddenly I was looking at it and saying gosh yes this is absolutely what I 
should be doing. And I, I do mean for decades it made no sense to have this calling. It really wasn't until I started taking those steps that the sense came through. That's my reflection to you, and I, I do think this is probably what this reading's about. Shall we join together in prayer? And we won't do the reading again. We'll uh, just have Psalm 116. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence that freed from the misery of sin and shame we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From earthborn passions set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me, with many a care oppressed. Let me thy loving servant be and taste thy promised rest. Lord Jesus, think on me, nor let me go astray. Through darkness and perplexity point thou the heavenly way. Lord Jesus, think on me, that when the flood is past, I may the eternal brightness see and share thy joy at last. That this evening may be good, holy and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may the, the, your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 116, on page 824 in the Red Books. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called him. The snares of death encompassed me, the pains of hell took hold of me, by grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, as God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the simple. I was brought very low, and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have, been, you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I believed that I should perish, for I was sore troubled, and I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, may we call upon your name, raise the cup of salvation, and so proclaim your death, O Lord until you come in glory. Amen. <clears throat> we continue with our canticle on page 246. 
Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Let's go straight to the Gospel Canticle. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. Lord God, that this night may be holy, peaceful and good, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, that you calm the troubles and worries of our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, that you comfort the dying, giving them the vision of your eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy. That you will give us wisdom to use this night aright. And as we enter into Sunday, a day of worship and rest, you grant us a deeper vision of your holy presence. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night to you.